let's look at mm -hmm. UI UX because UI UX is, is critical. It's critical, especially for building uh, products, uh, but as well to put the products with people and, and so forth. Um, so as a, as a global authority on, on, on the UI UX, how do you see UI UX and now you see this, especially in the, in the time of uh, immersion, let's say first very basic sentient AI, and as well, all the different things in the metaverse that we are getting into the web 3.0 and so forth. So I think a lot of people are um, looking at like, let's look at chat GPT because that's like, you know, that's the, let's say the match, right. That, that lit the fire. Um, I think a lot of people are looking at it as a, you know, an, an entire solution, almost like AGI, right. Um, you know, it's, it is the AI. Uh, but it's, to me, it's never been, it, it isn't, we've been working in generative AI for a while. I've always seen it as a user interface to new and old technology and software. It's, it's a front end, you know, it's not a back end. And, and the way I like to explain this is, is in two ways. One, if, if you want to chat GPT to do something super simple, like just, just to greet you based on the time of day. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. It doesn't know. It has no idea if it's morning. That's not how it works. It's just a next word predictor, right? So it's just going to greet you in the way that most greetings happen on the internet, whether it's morning or afternoon or evening. So it's probably going to say good morning because we more often say good morning than we say good afternoon or good evening. So it doesn't matter what time of day it is, it's probably gonna say good morning because it doesn't know what time of day it is. So how do you get that to work? How do you get it to do something that simple, right? And that basic, how smart is it if it doesn't even know if it's morning or afternoon, right? Um, you have to wrap it in some sort of cognitive architecture like one reaches that A, can determine the time of day of the end user, the person talking to it, not of where the server is, of where that person is. And then you have to, you know, put that into a data model that says, it's a very simple model algorithm that says, is this morning? It's 9 a.m. Is this, is this morning? Is this afternoon or is this evening? And then you just prime GPT and you say, hey, greet this person in the morning. And then it'll work, right? Now it will get it right because you have to tell it that it's morning. So determining that it's morning, telling it that it's morning, none of that's built into chat. So you can't really say it's very intelligent, right? You feed it that context and then it succeeds. So that's why I see it as a front end. The same thing as I could get chat GPT to order, to take my order for Kung Pao chicken at a Chinese restaurant that doesn't exist, but that chick, that Kung Pao chicken's not gonna ever arrive. I would be waiting forever, right? Because it doesn't do anything. It's just a facade. It's in the movie industry, it's like the house, cardboard house that has no actual rooms, right? Um, it just looks like a house. So it needs all of that back end to start working. So if you start seeing it as just another user interface, like a drop down or a map or a menu, um, it needs all of that stuff in the back to make it useful. And, and so it's not a breakthrough in back end technology you're looking at. It's a breakthrough in front end technology, in my opinion. Yeah, that, that's the key element in the front end, between the front end and the back end, but as well from the front end, uh, we are dealing with, especially at the moment, uh, most of our interactions digitally passes through a phone or through a desktop and uh, increasingly as well with our wearables like watches and so forth that are integrating technology and cars. Actually, a lot of user experience in the cars is, is critical. So from a, a pure UI, UX and front end that you're talking about, so from your experience of building from soundtrack for films and all the editing and engineering, to actually building advanced areas of uh, things. And it's actually something that I love about your book is that you, you go and you look at uh, all these nuances, but you put it in a very practical way for people to understand and actually create a narrative. So one of the things that I find uh, 
uh, and actually that's why I created the actually this this podcast and as well a lot of my work and actually the platforms I'm trying to solve like Open Business Council. So for this Open Business Council came because I found out that 90% of the business don't even have a website or any digital presence. And this is global numbers. So we're talking about 400 million SMEs and micro SMEs worldwide. For instance, the UK, which is uh, top five, six countries in the world, and one of the most digital, around 68%, 65 this is official numbers, don't have a website. So if we go through just this part, is that people are dealing with huge amount of advanced technology. And I had the case of going to Africa and using a phone uh, in a small fisherman market in the middle of the desert. And effectively, everyone was using the UI UX of WhatsApp and actually sending things for their WhatsApp. And they had a very small phone just to provide them capacity to phone because the electricity doesn't work very well. But they had a smartphone that actually worked. At mm -hmm. least they use it for, for WhatsApp. So in the end of the day, um, what are you talking when it comes to a lot of the things you're talking about UI UX is simplify things to get one thing that you can do very easily. And of course, there's a mass adoption that we need to get into that. So how do we go through this process? Because there's a lot of things you speak about the book. I don't want to go to the book in a while. But how do you get this, this simplicity, like you said, the front end? And for people listening to us, how do these mystify this? Because, of course, not everyone is as technical as yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at, let's look at, let's take an example, like you just said. Uh, ha, ha, you said 90% or 80% don't have websites, right? Which is crazy. What a crazy statistic, right? In this day and age that they don't have a website. So, of course, the problem solver in me goes, why? I got to know why now, you know? You just did it. Like, that's it. You ruined my week. Now that's all I'm going to want to know. <laughs> I'm going to figure I, out why. I have, I have a strategy for you. Well, I continue. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start guessing and say that uh, the, my first guess is going to be, it's, we've made it easier to make websites, but we still haven't made it easy enough. That's it. That's simple, right? Um, so what if the some large portion of those 90% just had to open up a chat, whatever chat they did, I don't care, right? Whatever, they opened their phone and said, hey, can you make me a website for my barbershop? Uh, I'm open between this time and that time. Uh, I, here's where I'm located. And we do men's, women's, and kids' haircuts. And you had a website. And that's it. Now you have one. Would we have more websites? Would would we take a dent out of those 90% if if it took them 10 seconds or 15 seconds to have a website? I, I think yes. I think I think absolutely yes. And so what we realize is to get a website, you got to go to the internet and you got to open your browser and you've got to find a page that offers websites and you got to sign up and you got to create a password and then you got to get a template and then you got to choose a template and then you got to write this stuff in the template and then you got to buy a domain name all of these things right that's why that's why they don't have one cuz we think we've made it so much easier as it used to be that it's easy it's not and you just said the statistic says it can't be easy if 90% don't have one it's still very hard. Anything that only 10% of the population can do can't be easy. <laughs> no, completely. And I think this is actually this kind of solving. And that's what I love about your book as well. Although in your book, you go a further a step away, but this is a key element.